All right. Uh, he needs no introduction. Star of Last Chance U, junior college national champion coach. Welcome to the show, buddy Stevens. How are you, man? Doing well. How you doing? Doing well, man. Been good catching up with you lately. Uh, we first met down in Pittsburgh, Kansas at the 2018 Junior College National Championship that we sponsored at E-Team Sponsor. Y'all went on to win a pretty defensive slugfest. Talk us through that night. Uh, you know, the first thing I remember that about, the, about that, that week was the night before when I had an a, opportunity to meet you and Sean Connors. And uh, that, was a, that was a great night, uh, getting to sit down and talk with you guys about fundraising and about how you guys can help our program and, and thanking you guys for sponsoring because without you guys, I mean, there was no sponsor for the, for the national championship game. But that was a great night. Uh, I remember distinctly, uh, so, you know, we had our prayer. I, I remember that. I remember distinctly them saying, okay, everybody go and get your food. And all of a sudden, both teams all at one time went to the same food line. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, please, nothing bad happened. Please, oh, nothing yeah. bad happened. <laughs> but the guys, the Garden City and the, those guys were did a did great job. Our, our coach staff and our guys did a great job. So it was good. It, it ended up being a good night. Uh, the night of the ball game was uh, the first televised uh, live uh, junior college or national championship so that was for me um it was very uh special because that was our chance to put what we do on on display and 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 get it to that next level and uh you know hopefully because you know community college let's be real community college and division three division two one double a uh you know not going to make a lot of money so the one way we can do that is get notoriety try to try to work on some things where we we have an opportunity to sell our product on the on the uh, national level when we get a chance to be on tv in a uh in an in a, a game like that so every time we have a chance to do that we got to do it and put on the best show we can and fortunately we came out it wasn't a it wasn't a score fest but it was uh it was, we, we came out on top, so that made it really good. Yeah, there was – I remember being on the sidelines, a ton of talent. And even this, you know, recently with the draft and seeing the guys that y'all had drafted uh, into the NFL, for a lot of listeners, you know, they might not be uh, as engaged with junior college football like you're saying, other than their experience of watching Last Chance U. We talked about when, when y'all were featured, we had – independence and then this this year we're actually having another client at laney college yeah. out here in oakland feature what has it been like for you since the show I, i'm sure it feels like another life ago yeah it feels like it was a long time ago um you know life's been you know it's 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 good um we're you know we're, we're moving forward uh we we won a national championship in 13 and 14 uh they came in 15 and 16 and we weren't so lucky uh, they leave, and then we win national championship in seventeen and eighteen. So we it's we kind of sandwiched that and sandwiched uh, LCU in there between national championships, and so that's been the good part. Uh, this past year, we didn't have such a great season, but we're trying to get back on 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 track. But it's been um, uh, it's been good. Um, we've learned a lot uh, from that from that experience, and uh, and and I think we've we've come out on the on the back end a lot better for it. Yeah. Definitely. How, how would you summarize the, which, shoot, that's a question. How would you summarize the last chance you experienced? Uh, yeah, yeah, number one, eye-opening. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an eye-opening experience when you have uh, that many people going around filming. Uh, you, you know, you, you give up your, you know, the, I think the one thing, if we had to go back, we would, we would try, probably not give up our editing rights, you know. Um, yeah. At the same time, you, you wanted more of the full story to be told, you know. Um, but the story that was told was, you know, any documentary is told through the eye of the documentarian. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, that's, and they did a great job of telling the story that they told. There was just so much more to the community college experience that you wanted to tell and that you wanted told. But uh, th th that sometimes those things sell and sometimes those things don't. But I think the thing that I, 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 it was a humbling experience for me. Uh, I got to learn a lot more about me and myself. I got to learn a lot uh, about, uh, you know, the, the, the other community colleges and, and what they do and how they saw those things. And, and we, uh, it was, it was, uh, but 
all in all, uh, it was a good experience. It, uh, you know, we have the largest Twitter following of any community college uh, in athletic department in the country. We're a little over 50, almost 51,000 followers. Um, and so, you know, the, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword and it's been, it's been really good and it's uh, been really humbling too. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about kind of the, the following that you guys have and, and obviously popularity for the, for the school. Um, personally, what do you feel like is the greatest lesson that you, that you've learned? It can be from the last chance you experience, the last yeah, chance you experience, or something else. Well, I mean, the, to me, the, 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 the thing that I learned most was that one, you're not going to make everybody happy and it ain't going to happen. You know, you yeah. just you can't do that. Um, two, uh, that, um, sometimes you have to think before you open your mouth. <laughs> I don't do enough of that. Okay. Right. I mean, all the time. Right. So, yeah. um, the, the other thing is, is that, um, along the way, um, you got to do what you got to be committed to doing what you need to do to make your program run and what you feel committed, uh, what your commitment level is or what your, what your priorities are. Uh, you got to be committed to those and stay with those and don't vary from them. You know, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that you're not going to keep make everybody happy. You just gotta, you just gotta go with it. You know, yeah. uh, if you're going to run a certain offense, a certain defense, go with it. Don't worry about what anybody else says. Just you do your deal. And mm -hmm. as long as you've got the kids in the back of your mind, as long as you've got their, uh, their, their well being, you know, in, in, in the forefront, that's the thing that's the most important is, is making sure that they're getting what they need to get out of it, whether it's, uh, a father figure, whether it's an uh, authoritarian figure, whether it's uh, tutoring, whether it's whatever that is, coaching, you know, whatever those things are, you know, I think, you know, all in all, I, I, I enjoyed the experience. Uh, glad it's over, but uh, <laughs> there'll be something else and there'll be something new come along someday. Yeah. If they came calling you at this point, are you like, hey, we've, we've done our deal. We win national championships when you're not here. Well, we, <laughs> we, we've had an opportunity to do, to do some other things, and we and I think we will in the future. Not giving up a lot of the editing process, trying to tell more of the all of the story. Um, you know, uh, would you do it again? Yeah, I mean, I think you would, yeah. but I think you'd try to. You know, um, again, sometimes you have to. You got to pull back the reins, and you got to you got to you, you got to really think about what you're saying, and not insert your your foot in your mouth so much. You know. Yeah. Have you, like, I think about that since watching it and have you adapted like your coaching style since being filmed? Like, would you say like, Hey, I'm, I'm, there, is there a different version of buddy? Just cause my interactions with you, like, um, I think you've communicated some of that to me. Yeah. I think, I think you, I think you do. I think you, you realize that, Hey, times change, you know, I mean, you, you can watch, you can watch some of the, greatest coaches in the in the world you know they may change offensive philosophies uh they also change philosophies on how they coach and how you interact with with your with your student athletes times change and you have to um i think the one thing that um, um that I, i've stayed committed to is that um is the belief that uh, look uh my god knows i love him and, uh, and, and there are times that I have said things and done things to make sure that you, you impress on young people what's important or, or, or making sure that you push them. And you have, to stay, you have to stay committed to making sure that you get the job done and you, you, you get those young people what they need. And, uh, and I think the one thing that I've tried to do more of is be more uh, – more well-rounded and giving them what they need as far as off the field stuff too, you know, not just the on the field getting after them or, or, or hollering or screaming or it's the, you know, it's, it's, it's the whole thing. It's the, um, the, the trying to be the hard, tough, hard nosed old school coach. And then at the same time, give them the other part of that, that they need the, the, the talking, the, 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 if there's a, if you have to be a father figure, you know, yeah. the, the advice, just being, you know, being there. I can't be their, I can't be their friend and their coach, but I can try to do the best I can to give them all those things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously Brittany Wagner was a big part of your program. And I know that that's still, you know, academics are still 
super, super important in getting kids onto the next level. Yeah. Um, are there, you talk about being a father figure, you talk about, Hey, sometimes you got to give them some tough love. Are there any stories or relationships from, from past seasons that you feel like, Hey, this is something, you know, not everything is told. This is a great story on where this kid's at now or a relationship that I've still been able to continue investing in or stay connected with. Does anyone kind of stand out to you? Well, you you do. uh, So many of them, you know, so many of them do. Um, One, just, just recently talking to, uh, talking to Chad Kelly last week, uh, uh, he and I talked uh, and, and the fact that how far he came and, and how far he's, he's continuing to come and work every day. Um, last week we talked to Jaron Reed. Jaron came here and, uh, you know, his, uh, his, his granddad was the father, was the male figure, father figure in his life. And he passed away while he was here. And uh, I told Jaron, called him the other day and Jaron was doing so much for his community in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And I was just telling him about uh, how, how proud his granddad would be. Uh, he's also a new father and, and just, you know, he just signed a new contract. He's doing so well. And uh, we're, you know, we continue to have those relationships um, but you know, you, you, you get caught up sometimes in the, the now and when these guys move on, um, it's just, uh, it's, it's really hard to keep up with everybody, but we try to do the best we can. You know, just, if you, if you just had a day or you had a, a somebody that could just a Rolodex that you could just wheel and call the next guy Please. the next day, how, how great would it be? But so many times, even the players, the guys that I played ball with, you know, we do, a, we, we try to keep up with each other, but it's so hard to keep up with them it's so hard to keep up with my former players and it's so hard to keep up with my former coaches we got scattered all over the place you know yeah we talked about that just junior college football means you got a kid for a year maybe two you got a coach for a year maybe five and a lot of your staff are are on to different places and are are doing a good job uh how do you deal with turnover at a at a jc well, athletically, you, you, I've always had the I've always had the philosophy that I'm not worried about two years from now. I'm not worried about next year. I'm worried about right now. I'm worried about this football team making this football team the best football team we can make it and do whatever we got to do to make this one great. Um, I do the same thing with with the coaches. You know, you I, I, when I hire coaches, I tell them I don't want you to be here for five years. I don't want you to want to yeah. be here for ten years. I want you to want to move up. And on, and I want your, I want you to understand that every time your your position goes on the field, that's your resume, you know. That's and that's where your that's and I want them to move on uh, because I think that's the. Uh, I mean, if you look at our coaching tree, we've got a we've got a pretty long and distinguished one right now that of yeah. defensive line coaches, defensive coordinators, you know, offensive coaches, uh, quarterback coaches. Uh, you know, uh, we've we've got a, a line of, of coaches that have come in and gone through and moved on almost as uh, distinguished as, as our players. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's been really impressive. To I think see. that way at every community college, you know, we, we all have the same deal, but it's just been our philosophy that, you know, I'm not worried. I'm not – I'm going to make sure that our football team right now is the best it can be coaching-wise, player-wise, you know, find the best find the best coach you can find and let him do his job. Find the best player that you can find and help help him get motivated to do whatever he needs to do to move on athletic and athletically and academically. Yeah. It's good to hear how much how supportive you are to your assistant coaches. I know we were talking earlier about support you're giving to your wife in a time like this. Your wife's in the medical field and during yes. this COVID crisis uh, when we chatted earlier this week, she was coming home and you said, Hey, I gotta, I gotta go talk to my wife. I'll call you back because that, <laughs> that's the priority. And I understand that. What's it been like supporting someone who's in the medical field during a time like this? Yeah, the, the, the thing that you can do uh, is, is make sure to be there to listen. You know, she's going to tell me about something, you know, crappy that happened during the day. It could be something as small as, you know, she 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 got wet going into the work. Whatever whatever that that made that day bad, or or, or you just want to be there to listen. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, when when they come home, home is a a place of relaxation and get away. And uh, and we do everything we can. My daughters, I have three beautiful daughters that do a fantastic job of coming in, and mom will come in and and they'll have supper cooked, or they'll have 
you know, mama, a, an ice water or a diet Coke or whatever, sitting there waiting on her. And, uh, and they it just, you just do the best you can. And I think during this time, you know, we've spent more time together as a family, at, you know, when we have those times, you know, at the supper table or going to the park or going on walks, I've spent more time outside in the last probably two or three weeks, just trying to get out in a way and yeah. be not the inside, not be watching the TV or whatever. And, um, and that's been, that's been refreshing to me that, that we've, you know, Hey, you know, <laughs> I, I got to get my big butt up and, and get out and mow the grass and do the things that you do. But, 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 but just being, being there for, for those, those uh, frontline workers, making sure that you can do everything that you can do to, when they come home uh, to, to make it a place of rest and relaxation for them. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, well, in Chalk Talk, before we get to some Chalk Talk, we do a little thing called a two-minute drill. A little rapid-fire right. questions for you. Uh, feel free to, to give your answer, and uh, we will start with, what have you read that I should read? Uh, meat Market. Meat Market. Give meat me like a two – yeah, give me the synopsis. All right, Meat Market, it is a uh, – it's, it's written uh, – uh, the author wrote it following Ed Ogeron around through the recruiting uh, ah. tour back when he was a head coach at the University of Mississippi. And it talked about, it went through home visits. It went through the recruiting process, how dirty and low down the recruiting process can be, uh, not just in the SEC, but all over the country, even in community. Just in the oh, SEC. <laughs> no, 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 no. But that, yeah, meat market, read it. Okay, cool. Uh, favorite part about being a head coach? Ooh, um, you get to ride in the front seat of the bus. They were, hey, it's a little, it's the little things that are the it's, big things. It's the little things. That's right. <laughs> uh, what have you done that I should do? Um, go to Black Mountain, North Carolina, and go to the top of Mount Mitchell. It's the highest point uh, east of the Mississippi River, and when you go there. And you stand up on top of that mountain. It is it is beautiful. It is you can see God's work. You can see uh, you go up there and you see the vegetation. I use it as a as a teaching tool for my guys. You know, if you're on top of the mountain, yeah. you go up there. Those 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 trees, those bushes on top of the mountain, they're husky. They're tough. They're different. The 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 vegetation on top of the mountain is a whole lot different than in the valley. So yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's a great spot. Beautiful spot. Oh. So it is two months, T minus two months till I become a dad. And my wife and I are baby moon, which got canceled. And a lot, a lot of things have been canceled in this season. Obviously, we're okay. sad about that. But it's not like it was our wedding or her baby shower just got canceled last weekend. Uh, we were going to go to North Carolina. And are so you? It, we, we were. We, we'll, we'll do it again. I mean, we'll, we'll reschedule it, but I, uh, I'm going to write that down. That's, that sounds like a beautiful place. Uh, last one, favorite game day ritual. Could be a meal. Could be, you know, your socks. Um, the truth. <laughs> I, I, I take a nap. Hey. I take a nap and uh, I take a nap. I'll take a shower before I go over to the, to the stadium. And uh, pretty much um, th that. And uh, uh, but my most favorite thing is I, I text my, my my oldest daughter and I've since uh, I, I got into coaching and since she was old enough to 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 text and got her first phone, we'll text each other game day. You know, it's just just okay. the word game day, and that's that's uh, okay. That's 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 the best part of game day for me. Is this like a cat nap or like a? It's like twenty minutes. Or is this like an hour, hour and a half. Oh no no! It's about it's just a little, little just a little cat nap, just a little something to to take take the edge off. <laughs> yep. Just trying it. to just trying to pass a little time without without sitting around worrying about it. Yeah. Well, we'll cross our fingers and uh, hope and pray that that we get to experience the game day rituals this fall. I think we will, but who who knows at this point? Um, well, it's chalk chalk time. I'm excited to to learn. I know you got some clips of some guys that are. Yeah. in the league now so feel free to share your screen and decide to get coached up all right this is our we're, i'm going to show you guys our inside zone our inside zone has uh we've used the same terminology I, i'm i'm a big believer in just keeping everything really simple uh we keep it simple so we can go fast 
And uh, my the the rules for my inside zone, I'm, I'm I'm giving you I'm giving you everything that you need. Okay, uh, our rules for the inside zone are play side tackle is base, play side guard is base of three, combo a two, two eye shader a zero, center is going to be combo the a gap player to Mike. It's his rule. Backside guard is the same as the front side guard, base of three, combo a two, two eyes, shader a zero. Backside tackle is base as long as first pass Mike will allow me. That's it. If you can, if you can rewind that and keep and write that down, do whatever you want to do. But uh, that that's that's the rules, and that's the rule that I've had, and the rule that we've had for for uh, 19 years since like I got started in the league back at uh, at Pearl River Community College. So um, this is it, and hopefully we'll take you guys through it a little bit. Now uh, we're going to be running in this play right here. We're going to be running the inside zone uh, to the right, uh, to the top of the screen. This is versus a stack defense. Um, this is, um, if you'll, this, let's, let's just take you through it. How about, if you look at it, left tackle, all right, first the right tackle, we'll go right tackle. Right tackle is going to base, okay? Right guard is uncovered, so he's working out and up. He's, he doesn't have a three. He doesn't have a two. He doesn't have a zero, or excuse me, he doesn't have a shade. We've made a, a, uh, a call here, and the left guard's going to work with the center to the mic. The right guard's going to work out and up to the uh, Sam. And the backside tackle, his rule was base. The left tackle's rule is base as long as first pass Mike will allow me. Well, first pass Mike's head up the inside of me here. Just right here. Can you see the arrow? Mm -hmm. Right here. So there's first pass Mike. So he's going to high wall to first pass Mike. Okay? Let's take you through it. Now, this tackle right here that we've got, Number 79 just got drafted by the uh, Baltimore Ravens. And uh, he came from Mississippi State, Tyree Phillips. So this is his, this is actually his first game starting at, uh, at East Mississippi because he didn't play much his freshman year. So this is his first game starting here. 6'7, 360, big kid. Play side tackle, base, open up and base the, base the inside number. Now the right guard doesn't do what he's supposed to. He's supposed to be working up to this guy. Okay, but he doesn't do he doesn't do his job. Running backs, really good running backs make really good offensive line coaches and offensive linemen. <laughs> Again, this is a this is a uh, the next game plan versus a a team with uh, that is uh, runs a stack. Now, if you'll watch this cut right here, this cut by this running back, that guy happened to go to Washington State and play. So he's 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 pretty good, you know. So that, that that's a that's a heck of a cut right there. Again, play side tackle is going to base. Play side guard it should be out and up. Okay, that's a couple ball games later, so he's gotten a little bit better. Okay, uh, guard and center working a gap player to Mike. Backside tackles high walling to first pass Mike. Let's look at a defense that's a little different. Now, they're trying to play a 4-2 box. They're playing a 4-1 box. They're trying to play 4-2 with the overhang here, okay? Play side tackles base. Play side guard's going to be base. We're working an A-gap combo to Mike, and first and the tackle should be basing as long as first pass Mike will allow. Well, first pass Mike's way out here, so you don't have to worry about it, okay? Let's see what happens. So he should be just basing left tackle, but he he doesn't. For some uh, now, what may have happened here? Well, he he made the back the left tackle didn't make a great call. He should be the left tackle should be basing. The left guard in the center should be working nose to Mike. But like I say, great great running backs usually make good offensive linemen's mistakes <laughs> look good. You got a four-two box. We're going to ask. We're going to ask the inside receiver, and this is this is kind of one of the plays that I wanted to show. We're going to ask this inside receiver to go to the first linebacker inside. Okay, we should be running base, base. We should be comboing the a gap player to Mike. And you can see how important the uh, you can see how important the inside receiver's block is, and we really try to show them how important they are. He's going to go inside and block first linebacker inside and then make the running back cut off of that. 
Here's another where the wide receiver does a good job of getting his block. We don't do a good job of blocking play side. And uh, the running back just makes a, a really good cutback. Again, this, this running back, really good, played at Washington State. But you can see, you can see the linebacker, outside linebacker fills the hole, and we have to have a cutback. And this wide receiver does a great job of making the play and getting us a few more yards. That's it. That's the inside zone. It's not that – it's really not that hard. Um, what we do is not uh, intricate at all. Um, that's the – that's our rules. Again, base, play side tackles base. Play side guard base of three, combo of two, two eye shader zero. Center is working the A-gap – is working the A-gap combo. And then uh, backside guard is the same rule as the play side guard. Backside tackle, his rule is going to be – base as long as first pass Mike will allow you. That's the rules. That's what we do. It's simple. It's, it allows us to go fast after teaching that for so many you know, years. And uh, you, I've, I've learned to try to skip a few corners. I've learned to tag some things to it. Sometimes we'll even trap it. Sometimes we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll tray, we'll counter tray it uh, and still keep the, st still try to stay within our rules. But um, again, I, I, the one thing in the 19 years I've been in this league and learned to do is to make sure that we keep everything simple so we can go fast. Uh, yeah. Also that we can learn and, and because sometimes, you know, you've got guys in at four year schools that, ha that are in it three and four years and have learned to uh, have learned it. You know, uh, we've got a guy, we've got guys that some of the guys that we bring in from high school have six weeks to learn it because they're going to be starting and they're going to be working on the field and they're going to be out there playing the very first ball game. So we better keep it simple. We better keep it to where they can, they, it, you know, it's, it's easy for them to learn it, uh, you know, and, and it comes quick to them in the brain. And so, so that they can play fast and they can play hard because if they play fast and hard, they're not going to get hurt and they're going to be successful. So. It's the bread and butter, man, right? It's the bread and butter it. for your running game. Yeah, it. I mean, it really is. Our, 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 we're inside zone, outside zone team that, you know, and we, we can, and we could tag enough stuff off those two plays to, to, to that, that would be all we could run in a year. You know, it just, just take those two plays and it doesn't have to be intricate. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Look, we're not putting anybody into space and we're not building a piano. It's just football. And the one <laughs> thing that I think the biggest thing that I've learned over the years is, it doesn't matter what you know, it's what the kids can, kids can do and it's what they can perform well and be successful out on the field. Um, for us, it's, it's been um, uh, you just keep it to where we can go fast and we can, uh, and there's not a lot of thinking that goes on after we give the signal. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. The school I was coaching at, uh, you know, keep it, keep it simple. Uh, it's not what, coaches us as coaches know it's what the players can do that's the thing that st stands out from what you were saying but school I coached at man when we first started coaching there it was this that and the other and long ass play calls and and that sort of thing and then finally we're like we're giving you a wristband you're gonna figure out what number one means and it's not even gonna say the play it's gonna say step play side and get a color you know like <laughs> it's just simplify it make it easy for them and and I think that's a key in a lot of different areas of life simplify it I tell our sales guys that make it simple like don't overcomplicate things and then you'll be more natural and you'll kind of use the giftings that you've been given I've been to the I've been to the a lot of different clinics I go to the cool clinic a lot and I remember one time we went to the cool clinic and there was a guy that had 41 coaching points on running the counter okay well I'm okay with that because if the counter's all you run, yeah, coach that yeah. thing up, you know. Yeah. But yeah. just, just, just keep, whatever you do, allow them to go fast and 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 don't 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 allow them to think too much, you know. You know, it's, I yeah. think that's the that's the that's the key. They don't need to they don't have to need to have to think about it. They just it's a reaction to them. So, you know, because yeah. they're going to be out there doing it when when we're standing on the sidelines. And I know yeah. this: great athletes make really good coaches. Hey, the running back. Couple of those clips, I'm like, dude, oh. stud. 
making that oh, yeah. line look good. Yeah. It's it, it there's a co there, it's it, I mean you you can look at it as a, it's a big it coincides you know when you when you when you when you have a good coaching record you can go back and look and go oh there was a lot of really good players on those teams. Yeah, well we've had a lot of really good have, assistant coaches too. Yeah, and there's the reality is there's a lot of teams with talent that didn't win, so. It's oh, yeah. not just it's not just the Jimmies and Joes. It's you you got to find a way to inspire and coach them up and discipline, organization, all those things. Uh, if you're to give a, a young coach who's trying to find his footing some advice there, or maybe look at a young buddy Stevens and oh. speak some some wisdom into him, what would be uh what would what would you share? Um, you, you know, I, I, years ago, uh, I had a head coaching job. Uh, back in um, uh, in Alabama, my first my first full time job. I was a I was a graduate assistant at Northeast Louisiana University, which is now Louisiana Monroe. And I got out and I took a head coaching job at uh, Sparkman High School. And uh, I got fired from that job after two years. Now they had lost thirty three games in a row when I took the job. <laughs> okay, and we won two games and then we won one game. And then we got fired, and I spent the re- I spent the next seven years trying to make sure that I didn't make make some of the same mistakes again. I think in in coaching, uh, the thing that I would say most would be um, some of the things that I have not done. Uh, you know, keep journals about what you you know some of the stuff that you go through on a daily basis. Um, make sure that with uh, no matter on what level you you. You, you end up patting a kid on the back when he you, you know, goes off the field, you know, um, no matter what kind of day he's had. Um, and, and pat as many backs as you can. Um, the other thing is, is, is uh, again, you're not going you're gonna, to you're make everybody happy. You can't do that. So find your philosophy and roll with it and right. make, it, make, it, make, it your, make it your mantra, whatever it is. Uh, and, uh, and, and roll with it and, and, and stick to you, stick to your guns. Yeah. I love it, man. Well, thanks so much for, for taking some time out of your day. Um, oh. thinking about you and obviously your, your wife as she's dealing with this coronavirus uh, pandemic and safety and, and, uh, health to everyone in East Mississippi program. But thanks so much for your time, coach. Thank you, man. I, anytime.